We've all had mornings that are just rough. Alarm blaring, endless to-do lists taunting us, and that feeling that today is supposed to be super productive, but it could feel so overwhelming. But what if the key to making the most of each day and getting through the hard stuff so that you can live your dream life isn't about adding more, but subtracting more? What if it's about simplification? What if the secret to feeling better is letting go? Imagine you're in a lifeboat paddling towards your goals or the life you imagined, but it's overloaded with unnecessary baggage and stuff. Every item around your house, piece of clothing in your closet, every email, meeting, and task that doesn't contribute directly to your destination is weighing you down. It's making the journey a grueling mess. And it's time for the lifeboat test. It's time to take a ruthless inventory of everything in your personal and your professional life and ask yourself, is this truly essential? Does it move the needle towards your dreams? Is it making you feel good? And if not, dump it overboard. And you can start small with simple adjustments you know, at home, walk around the house and ask, what's absolutely necessary here? Or what brings me joy? And if it doesn't add value, it's time to give it away so someone else can enjoy it. Our closets are filled with clothes that we haven't worn in months. If you haven't worn it for six months, or if it doesn't make you feel confident, add it to the giveaway pile. At work, sharpen your presentation, cut the fluff, keep those high-quality, engaging images and killer stats, and craft questions that ignite interest, not boredom. Maybe rethink your one-on-ones, ditch that 30-minute chit-chat session, and focus on high-impact 15 to 20-minute sessions that leave both of you energized and equipped. Remember, less is often more. Think about Marie Kondo, the art of tidying up. She's awesome and she took off because you can live a more fulfilling life when you simplify your life. As Mark Twain wisely said, the best way to predict your future is to create it. So what are you waiting for? Start tossing. Research from Michigan Psychological Care shows that this simplification can lead to incredible benefits in your life. More creativity, reduced stress, heightened concentration and joy, all leading to a fuller life. So it's not just about clearing some mental clutter, it's about fueling your success and finding joy in the journey. And as you declutter your life, Watch and feel as the stress melts away. Imagine paddling your lifeboat with ease, finally feeling in control, focused on what truly matters. Now, look, this is a process, and it's not always easy, but it's absolutely worth it. So take the lifeboat test today. Identify one area in your life that needs simplification, whether it's at home, in your closet, your email, your daily schedule, even a project that's become a bit overwhelming. And toss the unnecessary. Hold on to only the essential and feel the weight lift off your shoulders. This is your life. Take control of what's in front of you. Take control of what's suffocating you and let it go. Creating your dream life isn't about adding more. It's about letting go of what's holding you back. So grab your metaphorical shovel, toss 
overboard the dead weight and start paddling towards the life that you're meant to live and breathe. Remember, you have the power to shape your destiny. So go out there and make it happen. We all have something that we're known for, that we're fairly good at. And for me, coaching is what I do. But years ago, when my wife signed me up to coach my five-year-old son's flag football team, that was a completely different story. So what do you do when you're thrown into unexpected waters? I mean, now you're in open water and the ocean and the waves are coming... Do you still remember how to swim? And even though you do, it's still a choice in those moments. Yeah, you can stop paddling, stop fighting, just let go and drown, right? Some voice in the back of your head is whispering to you, hey, that would be the much easier option. You can doggy paddle or float using just enough effort to stay above the surface or... You can remind your body and your mind that you know exactly what to do. And you lean in and you go. Well, that was the decision I made eight years ago. And that first season, hey, it was a disaster. But then shortly after, I started to find my sea legs. I started to find my breaststroke. I started to figure some things out. And I remember that I had the skills to make this happen. And today, not only am I still coaching, but now I coach other coaches on how to step onto that field with competence, how to brave those treacherous waters with confidence, not just floating through it. And I empower those coaches to dive in so that they can impact not only those kids, and yes, their parents, but their entire community. Sometimes we forget how capable we really are. Just because you're thrown into a deeper pool of water doesn't mean you don't know how to swim and swim well. So make the decision and make the choice to lean in, to make the most of it, not only in that situation, but for the entire role that you're in. Because you're exactly where you are meant to be. So start kicking. Start breathing, and you'll be swimming like you've never swam before. We've all heard the quote, believe you can and you're halfway there, from Theodore Roosevelt. Napoleon Hill says, you can do it if you believe you can. Believe in yourself. Trust yourself, because you are more capable than you can imagine. And remember... You have the power to shape your destiny. So go out there and make it happen. I want to address a common belief that holds many salespeople back. The notion of being stuck in certain patterns. Always saying, I could never do that. Or, I never finished what I started. Or anything along those lines. Let's break free from that limited thinking and embrace a new perspective. You see, identifying yourself as someone who's always this way or that way is a dangerous mindset. Your brain starts to echo those beliefs and soon enough, you start acting accordingly. But here's the thing, you have the power to change your mentality. It starts with simple projects, let's say, little tasks that you can absolutely accomplish. Imagine this, you're walking around your house and you're tackling some of that housework, some of those things, finally putting up that picture that's been collecting dust or even completing a small passion project. These may seem insignificant, but they lay a foundation for building a new mindset. So create a list, let's call it a victory list. Go around your house and complete those tasks one by one. 
Jack Canfield, one of my favorite professional development experts, talks about walking around your house and completing the tasks that you've been putting off. So pick a project that excites you. Something you know you can finish without a doubt, even if it only takes an hour. Write out your to-do list this morning and make it your mission to complete at least one task. Just one thing. This may seem simple, but it's all about giving your mind a mental victory. And by achieving these small victories, your mindset begins to shift. You start saying to yourself, wow, I did it again. I followed through. And that's when the magic happens. Build on these small wins before taking on bigger projects. Train your mind to celebrate every accomplishment, no matter how small. I want you to recognize that you are in control of your own success. You have to take that control and embrace it fully. So set aside a few minutes this weekend or during the week to do a few things that give yourself, your mind, your body, a victory. It could be something as simple as organizing your workspace, your your desk, or reaching out to a prospect that you've been hesitant to contact. Remember, the key is consistency. Keep giving yourself these mental victories, and soon enough, you'll realize that you are always following through. And it's a gradual process, but with every small step, you're reinforcing the belief that you are a finisher, a doer. I want to leave you with a quote from my favorite basketball player of all time, Michael Jordan, who says, I missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. I failed over and over and over again in my life, and that is why I succeed. So embrace failure as part of the journey. It's through those failures that you learn, that you grow, and ultimately you succeed. So keep pushing forward. Celebrate every victory along the way and watch your sales career soar to new heights. And remember, you have the power to rewrite your story. Let's talk about those moments when you feel like you're trapped in a maze of conflicting advice. You start to have this identity crisis, right? Everyone's telling you to be a certain way. Maybe you need to be more structured or consistent, but at the same time, they or others that you trust are fully convinced that you need to be more flexible and adaptable. It's like being pulled in opposite directions and it leaves you with a feeling of chaos. You know, which way should you go? Who should you be? I mean, picture this. You're navigating a new phase in life, and suddenly you've got all these voices, whether it's mentors, friends, family, you know, each with their own take on who you should be. And it's like a, a tug of war for your identity. And you're caught in the middle, not knowing which way to lean. But here's the thing, life is not about choosing extremes. It's about finding that sweet spot in the middle where you can be both structured and adaptable, consistent and flexible. And research backs this up. I mean, studies suggest that embracing a balanced approach to life leads to better well-being and satisfaction. As Albert Einstein once said, Life is like riding a bicycle. To keep your balance, you must keep moving forward. So it's about that continuous forward movement, even when you're uncertain about the path ahead. Don't let the pressure of having it all figured out paralyze you. Just take that first step and keep evolving. Now imagine this scenario. You're faced with a decision that could shape your future. And this is where getting curious with yourself gets interesting. Have a conversation with yourself and get genuinely interested in the responses. Ask yourself open-ended questions, explore different perspectives and 
listen to your inner voice, right? Build trust in your own judgment and intuition. And at the same time, embrace the decisive moments. Allow yourself to get good at making decisions. As Maya Angelou wisely said, you may not control all the events that happen to you, but you can decide not to be reduced by them. Life throws curveballs, but it's your ability to make decisions and adapt that defines you. So redefine your ability to decide. Let me share this uh, study that might resonate According to research in psychology, individuals who navigate identity crisis with a blend of both introspection, having that conversation with yourself, and decisive action, allowing yourself to be good at making decisions, they tend to have higher levels of life satisfaction. So embrace your own unique identity. See, it's in this sweet spot that you'll find fulfillment and authenticity. Let your journey be a masterpiece of both structured strides and flexible dances. And remember, as you navigate this identity maze, you're not alone. So keep moving forward. Keep questioning. And most importantly, keep being true to yourself. You have the power to shape your destiny. So go out there and make it happen. Life is not as complicated as it may seem. In fact, it all comes down to one thing, choices. Each day presents us with countless opportunities to make choices. Some may be small, like deciding what to have for breakfast or which route to take to work. And others may be more significant, like choosing to pick up the phone and make that extra sales call or deciding to invest in your personal growth. But it's in these moments of choice that something extraordinary happens. It's that snap, that realization that you hold the power to shape your own destiny. You hear me talk about it all the time, but you can choose to take action, to push beyond your comfort zone, or you can choose to let fear and doubt hold you back. Now, choices do have consequences. If you choose to hit that snooze button instead of jumping out of bed, you'll have less time to prepare for the day. Now, if you choose to prioritize distractions over focused work, you'll find yourself falling behind. I mean, the weight of, oh, I should have, will surely show up. But here's the beauty of it. You can make a different choice the next time. Not only tomorrow, but today. Imagine a world where every decision you make aligns with your goals and aspirations. It's not just about wishing for success. It's about making the choice to pursue it relentlessly. As American author William Arthur Ward once said, success is not a destination, and we know this one, but it's a journey. And here's the part I really like. The doing is often more important than the outcome. So how do we make those choices that lead us down the path of success? I think it starts with self-discipline. You know, self-discipline is the fuel that powers our ability to make consistent, intentional choices. That word intentional is so critical. It's the willingness to do what needs to be done even when it's difficult or uncomfortable. It's not about being perfect or achieving instant success. No, it's about having the self-initiative and self-control to consistently take action, even in the face of setbacks. It's about embracing the process of growth and learning from every choice we make. So as you embark on your journey today, remember this. Life is a compilation of choices. Every decision you make, no matter how small, has the power to shape your future. Embrace the power of choice. Cultivate your self-discipline and watch your sales success take off. 
I often use the spaceship emoji in this arena because we are all just a few choices away from launching, from taking off, from living out our full potential. So why not go out there and make those choices that will set us apart from the rest? Why not choose to reach out to our prospects with intentionality, knowing full well rejection is coming? Why not choose to invest in our personal development, continuously honing our skills and expanding our knowledge? Why not choose to maintain a positive mindset even when faced with challenging circumstances? Why not? It's not about the quantity of choices you make, but the quality of those choices. So prioritize what truly matters. Align your actions with your goals and watch your pipeline, your life in general, take off. Remember, you have the power to shape your destiny. So go out there and make it happen. I was in a band once and we had a great time performing and writing songs together. But the good times on stage and with friends is not what I remember most about that time. What I remember most is a very simple lesson from one of my bandmates that sticks with me to this day. We were recording an album and I asked him about hitting the gym. He said, hey man, I I made a decision that working out is not a priority. I need to hang out with my son instead. It was very clear that he had made a choice about what to do with his limited resource, time. And this was before I had kids. I had just finished my 32nd day of Insanity Max 30, and I was a little puzzled by his decision to just cut out gym time. And I was feeling incredible in my own choices, you know, working out, eating healthy, putting my my body first and to be honest I, I was judging him hard but as I reflected on that conversation over the years and especially after having kids and starting my own dad journey I realized how wrong I was and we only have so much time and we hear that all the time but sometimes we need to hear it again and with our limited time We have to make very clear choices. What will we do with it? What will we prioritize? Where are we going in life? And is our decision about time aligned with that path? My friend, with just a few words, and probably without even knowing it, taught me one of the best lessons ever. Choose how you want to spend your precious time. And he made great choices with his time. Today, he's the CEO of a very successful startup, and he has an incredible family. Why? Because he learned to say no to the things that came second. They might have you know, mattered to everyone else, but he realized early on what he wouldn't have time for, and without hesitation, he said no to those things. He focused on what mattered, what he knew he would have time for, and shut down everything else, regardless of what others thought. So what can we learn? Yeah, I need to say no to some things and be 100% okay with that. I need to be clear on what really matters to me and, and to the people I care about so that I know how to prioritize. I need to let go of the person I'm not so that I can fully invest and embrace who I am and who I'm going to be. And I need to remember that my priorities right now are not everyone else's priorities. And they may not be my priorities later, so I should never judge someone else on their own priorities or be too hard on myself when mine change. You know, we have the power to shape our destiny. So let's go out there and make it happen. Sometimes I feel like a superhero, even though I don't look like one. 
And that's because when I was a kid, I used to use my telekinesis to change people's minds. Now, I'm sure we all did something similar, but I used to focus with all of my energy on getting my mom to say yes to allowing me to have that cookie. And another. And another. And guess what? It worked. Now, as I got older, I began to use my senses and my telekinesis in sales to convince people over the phone or in person to buy into the solution that I believed would help them solve their problem. Now, am I actually a superhero? Do I go out at night in spandex and save people? Of course not. But I believe that we all have the ability to be superheroes. And what I mean is whatever we focus on, whatever we put our energy into, things start to happen. There's a momentum that we can create by simply using our telekinesis and our focus and our energy to move things along. If I stand still, if I close my eyes, turn up my ears, then all of a sudden I can hear like a superhero. When I quiet my body and my mind, I'm more prepared for that TikTok challenge with my daughter who loves to give me disgusting food while I'm blindfolded. And look, yes, I know it's mustard or hot sauce, but I breathe and I focus and yeah, I brace for impact. When I really want to, I can look hundreds of feet away, squint just a little and increase my eyesight just a touch. See, I don't have laser eyes like Superman, but I can heighten my senses when I choose to focus. And the same is true for all of us. Look, you may not have laser vision or telekinesis, of course, but you have something even more potent. You have you. Your unique blend of skills, experiences, and that ability that everyone talks about. See, when you tap into that, when you focus your energy on becoming the best version of yourself, that's when magical things start happening. You don't have to save lives to be a superhero. You don't have to do the incredible or the remarkable or the unbelievable. You just have to be the best version of yourself and allow yourself to focus. See, there's science behind this. A UCLA study found that the mere act of visualizing success actually activates the same brain regions as achieving that success. So when you close your eyes and you picture yourself nailing that presentation, or crushing the workout, or being completely present and available for your friends and family, your brain takes it as it's a done deal. It's like planting a mental seed. And with the right watering, aka action, some sweat, and yes, some of that grit, it blooms into reality. And especially when you put your energy on helping others, that's when you become a true superhero. I mean, think about it. That time that you spent mentoring a new colleague, or the extra mile you went to help a client succeed, or maybe the kind word that you offered to a stranger, those were your kryptonite bullets aimed at someone else's darkness, and you saved the day. Iron Man, one of my favorites, said it best. Heroes are made by the path they choose, not the powers they are graced with. So it's not about flashy costumes, one-liners, or superpowers. It's not about perfection. It's about choosing the path of kindness, of growth, of being the best version of ourselves for ourselves, and yes, for those around us. So let's choose that path. Let's heighten our senses. Let's use our focus and our energy for the good of others and be superheroes together. Look, the world needs your unique brand of awesome. And your path, the one 
paved with good intentions, with fierce determination, and that special something that only you can bring, it's waiting to be written. Look, you have the power to shape your destiny. So go out there and make it happen.